All right. Hello and welcome, welcome, welcome to the podcast, Eat Better Food Today. I'm your host, Ken Cunahan, and I'm excited to be sharing insights on why we believe that health and longevity begins with the food we eat. The goal of this podcast will be to inspire, educate, and enable folks to live a healthier life and do it affordably. My wife and I have been on this journey for over 10 years and continue to work on it every single day. Percent of the profits from this podcast will be put towards child hunger with initial focus on the poor suburb in America, East Cleveland, Ohio. As a reminder, please subscribe to this podcast. Be sure to visit my website, Eat Better Food Today, for links to the show, videos, all the recipes, books, and articles that our guests provide. On this episode, we're grateful to have Dion Dawson. Dion is a founder and chief dreamer of, of Dion's Chicago Dream, an innovative nonprofit social enterprise combating food insecurity at the intersection of logistics and the last mile delivery. He has more than a decade of experience in leadership, social entrepreneurship, and executive communications. He is a TEDx speaker, an Aspen Institute fellow, food fellow, an Echoing Green fellow, and a U.S. Navy veteran. Dion has won numerous awards, most recently from the Illinois Holocaust Museum, uh, 2024 Luminary Award for individuals who exemplify how everyday people can hold great power for change in their communities. Definitely an inspiration for this podcast. Dion, Dion and I met in July at the La, La Columbine Coffee in Chicago. In this episode, we'll explore Dion's thoughts on food, health, longevity, and discuss what continues to inspire him. Welcome, Dion. What is going on, Ken? How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> So I always get interesting answers to this question that range from coffee to a full meal, but I still believe a great start to your day starts with what you had for breakfast. So that's kind of my first opening question here. Uh, oatmeal. Oatmeal. Oatmeal? Yeah. Any, any, any coffee without oatmeal? Nah, nah, no coffee. Any fruit without oatmeal? Uh, nah, if I, if I eat fruit, it would be before. I don't, I'm not a warm fruit person. Got so, it. So yeah, if I do it, it would be before or after, never with, never. <laughs> so how about do you have any other morning routines oh let's see um wake up at four uh work out uh with my wife we you know checking the phone you know that's around the time my team gets going and delivering so you know no no texts and emails it means we're we're off to a good start log into our <laughs> dashboard we see all the teams are moving um Work out after working out, uh, check the calendar to, you know, decide what the vibe will be for what I wear. Um, and then, you know, me and my wife we shower, wake our son up, and then we kind of get the day going. But, you know, that's kind of like every morning. That's no matter what, it's like every morning. Yeah, I'm working on a new morning routine. I'm not there yet, but try to get up a little bit earlier, kind of get that kind of some quiet time in the morning before the day starts. So Absolutely. Absolutely. Before this chapter in my life, uh, I didn't understand uh, the importance of, you know, getting, getting started early, but uh -huh. I love it. I love it. I can't, you know, sleep in, you know what I mean? I love being able to get the day started. And then around 11 or 12, that's when the, the Hail Mary, that's Hail Mary time. That's to <laughs> see, what I, see what I can throw off, you know? <laughs> So speaking of outfits, what's uh, what's with the hat you're wearing today? Uh, Duck Crossing is actually, um, this is one of my good friends and uh, Navy veterans, a uh, brother of mine. He started a, a hat company. And uh, what's special about it is um, you can actually see the ducks. And this is dedicated uh, to his son who's on the spectrum. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, you know, it's really. I'll make sure I get you the website, but you know, of course, it's fly. It's actually corduroy, so it's actually you know what I mean. Like, but um, it also has a great meaning behind it, and and you know, I really love it. So just just you know, showing that support to him. Nice, very nice. So to kind of get after the kind of the the breakfast question, but can you kind of provide our listeners some background on your journey to kind of the Dion Chicago dream? I know you've got some. Very interesting and uh, inspirational uh, history to share here. I know, of course. Um, well, I am, excuse me, the founder and chief dreamer of Dion Chicago Dream. 
uh, the Chicago Dream is a social nonprofit social enterprise uh, based out of Chicago that's fighting food insecurity uh, through last mile delivering logistics. And so, you know, we, you know, kind of took the traditional pantry model, flipped it on its head where we provide, uh, number one, only fresh produce that we purchase, pack and deliver. Um, and that's so that we can sustain quality. Uh, we have never registered a single volunteer hour. Uh, so we've actually created 35 wage paying positions, paying at least $20 an hour. Um, and in the last three years, well, we've been four, uh, founded four years. We just turned four. So in the last four years, we provided 1.5 million pounds of uh, fresh produce to the Chicagoland region. Um, we're just doing that through programming that really challenges, um, you know, what food intervention looks like, what quality can be uh, sustained, and what consistency, uh, you know, must look like if we want this thing to really kind of, you know, get back to where it should be. So why why did you start decide to do this in 2020? Why why even start this journey? Um, I think that, you know, I, I think I didn't really decide to do this. I, if anything, you know, I committed to doing one thing and I just kind of wanted to do that one thing again, uh, because I tried everything else. You know, I felt like, even though, you know, people older than me would tell me that, you know, 30 years old is young, you know what I mean? But I've had a hard 30 years, you know what I mean? Before I started this and, you know, went through the queen's gambit of a lot of different things. And so, you know, I just decided after, you know, we, we fed uh, almost a hundred families uh, in June of 2020 to just do it again. And, you know, after that started, I decided to, you know, learn a little bit more and apply and keep going. And that's all I just, you know, really been on a journey of, dedicating, you know, my life and my work to the betterment of society and, you know, bringing innovation and energy and creativity to a sector that I felt, you know, really lacked it. And, you know, four years later, I'm having the time of my life, you know what I mean? Been able to do some pretty cool things and, you know, still on that journey of just trying to, you know, be the best version of myself I can be. Very nice. So when we met, uh, you know, I kind of shared with you the reason I reached out to kind of share what we're trying to do in this East Cleveland Center. And you kind of shared some of what you just shared with everybody and kind of what you're delivering. Um, how have you been able to grow? I mean, you need money to do this. You need food, obviously. You need a distribution, sourcing. I mean, just kind of what, what's some of the, how are you making this happen? Well, I think the first- It's pretty unique. I mean, of course, but I think that, you know, there's so many- unique people and approaches and i think that you know what we we what i accepted is you know my past you know does not matter you know what i have does not matter and who's not with me does not matter and from there you know i've really been able to you know have a a cup half full perspective i've been able to wake up and and you know, get it done because what else is there to do? You know, when we think about, you know, the money that's needed, you know, where is the money? You know what I mean? I think that a lot of times we love to you be ambiguous when we describe, you know, what's holding us back. You know, they don't want us to win. And, you know, the money is there, is not there. But, you know, I, I decided to, you know, make sure that I relied on the fact. So in terms of, you know, the money that's needed, you know, I look at the sector, I go to the IRS website and I look up a lot of different organizations to see how they're funded because, you know, that's public information. Mm -hmm. So I go there and I see who are the major donors and the major funders and, you know, like how were they, you know, fiscally positioned and, you know, I, I'm, I'm learning. And then, you know, I go to those websites and I see if they have any open RFPs or open app, um, open applications. You know, that's how I look at that. When I think about uh, the people that's needed, you know, like everyone is is looking for a job. You know what I mean? I think if anything, it's being committed to actually paying people because, you know, when you when you make the commitment to pay people, even if you can't pay them what they're worth. You know what I mean? Number one, it'll feel good to give them something. And number two, not being able to pay them will motivate you like hell to get more money to pay them. Uh, <laughs> in terms of uh, being able to grow and, and how we're unique, it's just really understanding the importance of knowing who you are, um, what your product is, and what your program is. And being able to know who we are, um, Chicago Dream has allowed us to, to grow 
uh, uniquely um, in the space as we're supposed to grow. And so, you know, with our, we don't, you know, use language that does not apply to our programming. We don't apply to just any program funding all willy nilly. We really focus in on, um, you know, who we want to be. And as a result, you know, is it difficult? Yes. But, you know, every single day it's about, you know, the the input, you know what I mean? Not the returns, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I don't decide if someone is going to pick us, but I, I make damn sure that, you know, we give them as many reasons to pick us as possible. Um, and just, and just, you know, every day, just waking up, you know, having that routine, you know, seeing what's out there locally, nationally, seeing, you know, what approaches are working, what, what isn't working, you know, what metrics are, you know, driving, um, you know, better outcomes, you know, what outcomes and metrics are, you know, driving the funding, you know, how people talk about themselves, how they're positioned, a lot of different things, so many different, um, you know, so many different things that play into, you know, why we've been able to get here. But I think it's just the, the commitment to people, the commitment to, you know, not only serving them, but representing them and, you know, making sure that, you know, we can, you know, put the best effort forth and, and just make sure that we keep trying no matter what. So let's talk about the food. So the food that you're providing as far as the, the type of food. So yes. uh, I've seen you on, you know, kind of on uh, social media and you kind of talk it. You're, you're not giving hand me down food. I mean, you're providing good quality food, fruits and vegetables to these customers, basically. So yes. how are you sourcing the food, which is different than I think, uh, most people traditionally think of how this food is sourced. Well, I think, you know, first and foremost, we're, we're customers. We're serving mm-hmm. our customers because we are customers. And so, you know, the what we had to draw a line with is taking uh, donated food or taking people's hand-me-downs, because then what do we do? We, we, we share those hand-me-downs. We give them to people and think that they deserve that. So understanding that, you know, everyone deserves uh, quality produce, understanding that if we're buying it, we have a lot more say so on what we receive um, and we have a lot more power. And so, you know, just understanding that, you know, the the hundred thousand pounds that we're providing uh, to the Chicagoland region each month, we're buying all of it. So we have a say so on what we receive. And as a result, you know, the produce that our recipients are getting they're getting the highest quality uh, possible and they're getting it at the beginning of his lifespan as opposed to the end. Very nice. So can you, so I know you have a big focus on the customer experience. Um, I interviewed a farmer yesterday, um, actually a couple of days ago, and he, he's got the same approach. He's, he learns about his customers before he starts deciding what he's going to grow, where he's going to distribute all. So it's, it's kind of understanding the customer first. And I know you have a focus on, you mentioned quality, dignity, respect, empathy. Um, how, how do you feel the, the kind of the, all this fresh produce is impacting people's lives? And so maybe if you have a few stories you could share about uh, some of your experiences. Well, I think understanding that, you know, if you start from fresh produce is a right, not a privilege. And mm-hmm. I think that, you know, it will position it in a way where, you know, we're doing what we feel is necessary to, you know, move the needle. And when we're doing that, you know, understanding that, you know, no matter what, we can't just um, not only focus on, you know, what we're giving, we also have to focus on how we're giving it to them. And so, you know, spending that extra dollar to make sure that there's a quality box that protects the produce and that is branded and that it looks good and it feels good. You know what I mean? And getting it to that last mile destination so that we can have the best chance at them receiving it like we want them to receive it. And then, you know, after that, doing a bi-weekly touch point to make sure that we're connecting with them to learn some of the anecdotal information um, so that we can know that we're doing the right thing. But how we're judged, we're judged as a logistics company. We know that our our deliveries right now were 1.61 minutes for every um, delivery right now. We know that our dream score, which is six different areas that were judged by our recipients, including stress after delivery, quality of produce, quality of delivery, and a few other things. Our dream score out of 10 is 9.88 and has never dipped below a 9.5. And we know this daily so we can go in and we can see if, if that dips, um, you know, 
two or three per, uh, points, we know something had to had to have happened because we're serving thousands of households. So now we can go to that direct input and see what happens. So it's really about illuminating the process and making sure that, you know, before we get to, you know, the outcomes, we make sure that, you know, what we're doing with our, our uh, processes is as, you know, efficient and top notch as possible. And that's where we really anchor ourselves because we know, you know, based on census tracts, based on national data, that the more access someone has to fresh and uh, fresh quality produce, the better chance they have at a longer life. Yes. And yes. that's what it's really about is being able to just be around it. You know what I mean? It's still about choice. They don't have to, you know, uh, let us deliver to them. And if they do, we appreciate them for it. And if they don't, we still love them because of it, because that's what choice is about. So it's really about understanding that we want to be around people. And if they decide to choose us, we're damn honored for them to do so. And we're going to make sure that, you know, we, we continue to earn their business because that's what it is. It's earning their business. Very cool. So how about, so I've seen you talk about a, a couple of customers, a Mrs. Myrna and a Mrs. Lewis. Maybe can you share just kind of the impact you've had on maybe one of those individuals? Well, I think, you, I think, you know, I'll, I'll share, you know, I try to, what I try to do is, you know, speak a little different because we're different. And I try to, you know, transition to really tell the, 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 the story of who we are versus, you know, telling the story of our, our residents without their permission. But, you know, uh -huh. we've, we've seen, you know, just in our staff, a, a change in, you know, how they interact with fresh produce. You know what I mean? We've seen them, you know, wanting to not only serve the recipients, but also serve themselves. You know what I mean? And they have access to receiving our dream deliveries box as well. But, you know, seeing some of our staff, being able to, you know, they have, we all have a chip on our shoulder. I couldn't get a job at Walmart before this company, you know what I mean? But, you know, <laughs> here we are, you know, running a multi-million dollar social enterprise. Uh, they all have a chip on their shoulder and they all, you know, want to show that they deserve a fair shot. And so, you know, having some who started with, you know, barely having a cell phone to now looking at buying their fir first home with their wives, you know what I mean? Others who, you know, got their first car. You know what I mean? After a decade, you know what I mean? Things like that, like, like not just, you know, health outcomes, even though we know that, you know, those are, that's the primary driver of our business, but there's so many other secondary um, influences in our, it, because of this work. And I think that, you know, when I used to talk about, even when I, I see Miss Myrna, you know, just, just seeing how happy she is, seeing how proud she is, seeing, you know, that, that she, you know, thought that we would stop and we never did. You know what I mean? <laughs> she, you know, like Ms. Ms. Johnson thinking that we would charge her. And we told her that we promised that we wouldn't. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Her being happy that we kept our word. You know what I mean? All of these small things that, you know, we, we can hold the line on. And when we talk about, you know, healthy eating, when we talk about, you know, being exposed to, to quality produce, sometimes it's about, you know, being consistent enough for people to trust it because public trust is important when, when you're thinking about changing eating habits or, or changing behaviors. And what we've seen is, you know, after that two or three month mark, our recipients start to trust us a little bit more. And they start to understand that we want to be there every step of their journey as opposed to just, you know, one, one and done, which, which mm -hmm. won't really do anything for their long-term health. So tell me a little bit more about how you're taking care of your team, your employees. You were talking, we met about the benefits, the pay. I mean, and now you're, you mentioned about they're able to buy houses. I mean, that's that's huge. You don't have a team of volunteers. You have a team of employees that is servicing those customers. No, of course, <clears throat> because I think that, you know, no matter what we're doing, when we think about uh, nonprofit work, you know what I mean? When we, when we talk about these black or brown neighborhoods, that really, excuse me, they're really, anchor a lot of the data where a lot of the funding comes from in, in all urban areas. Mm -hmm. If we don't have any of those, uh, those communities, um, if we don't have the job creation to go along with it, how is it sustainable? You know what I mean? When we think about, um, you know, the nonprofit uh, industry, you know, in some States is one of the biggest employers, you know what I mean? And so if we think about that and none of that, none of that, um, None of those salaries or no procurement or contracting is going back to the black and brown community, then I think we're really missing out on opportunities to really, you know, make their lives better in other ways. It's one thing to, you know, say, hey, we hope you you live a longer, healthier life. It's another thing 
for them to know that, you know, they can look at your organization and see that, you know, that that you'll hire, you know, people like them, that mm-hmm. you'll provide, you know, like legal wages, you know what I mean? You'll you'll be able to provide benefits with, you know, medical and dental and, and, and executive level jobs. And so it's really just making sure that as as we've grown as an enterprise, the things that we've learned we apply to ourselves and not just trying to preach it to other other entities. Well, and I've taken your advice after we met. So we are working on getting programs started out of one of the buildings on the that's campus. Right. And I do have somebody from the neighborhood who actually lives across the street that's not working with me on bringing some services into that building. So that's thank amazing. you for that. So of course, of course. I mean, that you know, if I could go back and, and, you know, tell myself, I would tell myself the same thing. And I think, you know, when we think about a lot of the approaches that we know don't work, we don't share them out enough. You know yeah. what I mean? When people ask me um, about the fridge, I had to tell them, you know, hey, the fridge was a good story, but it wasn't it wasn't scalable. You know what I mean? And I, and and some of them, you know, they only wanted the story, and that's fine. But also, you know, there's a, a lot our recipients ap- appreciate the honesty. I mean, not, mm-hmm. like like I get the intent, but you know, we have to start being judged in, in philanthropy off of our execution. Absolutely. So I recently read you had a, a post about the circular food economy. Um, so can you kind of explain, I don't know, is that an interest? Is that something you, you're thinking about or what, what did that mean exactly? It's, um, it's something that, you know, one of my colleagues, Dr. Um, Dr. Dominique Carter um, out of D.C., um, that's, that's where she really anchors a lot of her work. She's doing amazing work in, in uh, the circular economy, regenerative ag, but it's really just about teaching myself. You know what I mean? I think it's, um, you know, when you're around a lot of this information, um, when it piques your interest, when you see how you can apply these things and making sure that, you know, you know, ultimately we'll have to, um, you know, the economy and the food system will have to be circular um, if we ever want to kind of fix what's wrong and really connect mm-hmm. it, the, the, the food system is really disjointed right now. You know what I mean? Yes. It's not connected. You know, there are stops and gaps along the way. And um, if we were really intentional about, you know, having a circular food economy, I think that, you know, it won't take a, it wouldn't take a decade to continue, you know, to continue to like land some of the innovations that we want to land. So, you know, I, you know, I know entry level of it because I'm so fascinated with her work. Um, But every day I'm just trying to teach myself, you know what I mean? I'm asking myself, hey, why aren't we doing this? You know what I mean? And we were in a good position, um, especially when thinking through, uh, um, you know, regenerative ag, circular economy, um, because, you know, we have the buying power, you know, paired with, you know, our logistics and, and, and our ecosystem and our supply chain, it really allows us to not only, you know, pilot a lot of innovative techniques, but it all, it, it, it has allowed us to get them to scale a little bit quicker. You know I mean, I think when we're thinking through different approaches um, or connecting the food system, a lot of times we find stuff that, that, you know, we don't know if it will work to, um, at scale because we haven't had anything that, at, at scale to really, you know, apply it to. So, you know, it's really like looking at, you know, what role can Dion Chicago Dream play in continuing to build a circular uh, economy and and how would that play in the overall food picture, you know? Mm-hmm. Couldn't agree more. I mean, we're trying to, we're also, also partnering with an organization in this same neighborhood to start growing some food in the neighborhood yeah. as well yeah. so that you kind of get, it. it if, if you're not exposed to it, you don't know, kind of where it came from. You don't know how yep. it tastes. You don't know how to cook. I mean, there's just the whole, how, how the whole thing works is, uh, you know, from growing it to harvesting it, to packaging it, to cooking it, et cetera. So exactly. all good stuff. So NFL fantasy drafts are underway across the country. Yeah. And I've seen you talk about the dream team draft, which quite honestly, I don't, Maybe explain a little bit about oh, what. Oh yeah, is. yeah. No, no, no. Listen, I am, <laughs> I am, uh, I keep a lot of stuff close to vest, so it is, it is, um, it is definitely intentional that you all see it but don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what the the dream draft is actually um, our way of of having an annual event. 
but just isn't a a stuffy, boring, you know, gala that we bring people out on a, a weeknight. We're all sleepy and we have <laughs> an awkward paddle raise where the starting fee is twenty thousand dollars and the the dinner ticket is two fifty and the dinner's nasty and you know what I mean no we, we, we what we wanted to do was have an event where you know not only can we bring everyone in our movement together from you know donors to partners to supporters to sharers on on uh, social media to our team members to community members and do it in a way where you know number one there's low barrier event um of entry so there's you know pay what you can for the tickets mm -hmm. um it's going to be in the west loop uh in chicago so at, at venue west so it's going to look good it's going to be a beautiful venue open bar food and then we're going to have a draft of all of our partners who are going to be with us for the next year so we actually fundraised everything before we get into the room and hmm. when we get in the room, we're going to, you know, have a few cool moments of introducing almost kind of like a midnight madness type of feel of <laughs> who our new partners are going to be for the next year. And that's just, you know, it's really about, you know, continuing to move the needle huh. when it when it comes to, you know, annual events and what's really possible. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's just our way of, you know, trying to hold ourselves accountable, not only to the Dream Team movement, but to just continue to have, you know, events that matter. And, you mm -hmm. know, being intentional about when we bring people together, you know, we do it intentionally for, you know, for a reason. And it's to have a good time and to celebrate how far we've come in just four years. Nice. Nice. That's very cool. That's very cool. So how about you get the word dream in a lot of things? How about the dream vault? What is that about? I, I kind of saw it looks like a, some Amazon lockers and a grocery yeah. store, but it, yeah. I know it has a completely different purpose. Yeah. So uh, the dream vault is, you know, our network enabled locker system where we um, actually partner with uh, a business. You know, right now we have one in a save a lot in Inglewood. We have another one in the blue door neighbor, uh, blue cross, blue shield, blue door neighborhood center in Morgan park. But we able to partner with the uh, host location enroll up to 175 households in the vault within a one mile radius so that they can walk and or drive. And then they're able to pick up their weekly dream deliveries box in the vault. So not only, you know, is it again, fresh produce they're getting access to, they get their cold uh, text or email to them with, on every, you know, every week, the same day of the week, they have mm -hmm. all day to pick it up. And when they pick it up, they're able to, you know, be a local patron in that business. And so it's allowing that dollar to circulate um, in that neighborhood. And so it's just really about continuing, continuing to utilize that foot traffic um, and, you know, those human uh, behaviors so that we can, you know, they, they have free produce, uh, from the lock, um, from their locker, and then they can use their money in the store, getting something else they, um, they need. So just being intentional like that, you know, taking the existing, uh, Amazon locker approach and really, you know, you know, kind of tweaking it so that we can, you know, pair it with our amazing product. Nice. Nice. So how, talk to me about some of your partner organizations like Blue Cross Blue Shield. You just mentioned them. That's kind of an unusual partner organization to have in, in this kind of the nonprofit space, especially in the food distribution space. I mean, yeah, but I, but honestly, you'd be surprised. You know what I mean? I think, you know, it's weird to the public, but, you know, I always challenge myself uh, with, you know, asking people, you know, you know, what do you know to be true? Because there, I think mm -hmm. a lot of times we fill those gaps with assumptions. I mean, Blue Cross Blue Shield is, you know, and especially in Illinois and in Chicago, one of the biggest philanthropic givers, um, especially, um, in not only in food, but, you know, just, just in, in grant making. And so if anything, you know what I mean? It's like challenging anyone who's out there in grant making uh, in food, food distribution, emergency food, health is wellness, uh, health and wellness, um, you know, food is medicine, anything. Just really bringing our programming and, and our partnership to them and saying, hey, this we, we think we could be good partners. You know what I mean? And I think that, you know, uh, credit to them. They've been amazing partners for the last two to three years um, in, in allowing us to be us and, you know, really saying like, hey, you know, there is a world where we want the same thing, which is, you know, people to be healthier and just being, you know, not only us holding them accountable, but them holding us, us accountable uh, to being good stewards of, you know, the dollars that we bring in the door and the people that we're serving. Nice. How about some of the other, I know you um, are on, you have different, you're like a fellow in different areas like this Next Gen Amex, Feeding America, Echoing Green, Aspen Institute, Food Fund, uh, Chicago Regional Food Fund. I mean, what, how are you working with those or how are they working with you, I guess? I mean, some are uh, funders, uh, some are colleagues in the space. Uh, Echoing Green is an uh, uh, international fellowship. 
um, you know, for social impact leaders. Um, and, you know, they've been amazing. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them. Um, you know, Echoing Green is, is, you know, really the cream of the crop when it comes to really, you know, believing in leaders and allowing us to be who we're destined to become. Um, I'm on the steering committee of the Chicago Region Food Fund, uh, Chicago Region um, Food, Chicago Region Food System Fund. Um, but just really, you know, grant making there and, and getting uh, dollars out to, you know, local orgs in the Chicago region that are doing amazing things in food. So it's really like, you know, different, different things that I'm doing, but trying to make sure that, you know, I can, you know, teach myself and others can teach me, you know, so many different perspectives and lived experiences and approaches um, and thoughts around food so that we, so that everyone can be represented. You know what I mean? Because it's all about, you know, how efficient can we be, how effective, you know, and how, how far can we take it? And, you know, I want to make sure that, you know, I'm, I'm not doing a disservice, not only to myself, but my community and my organization by having, uh, you know, my way or the highway type of, type of attitude. So just really making sure that, you know, I'm, I'm out and about and, you know, not secluded in, in my thinking and my research. And as a result, it's been able, uh, I've been able able to have a, a, a multifaceted approach and and kind of landing zone for, you know, how food is today and where we want to take it. Very, very cool. Very open minded as far as how you're approaching. I mean, the, the whole the whole Dion Chicago dream and just from a customer focus to working with partners. I mean, you're doing a lot of listening, which is fantastic to try to figure out what the best solutions are for that space. So and not to mention, I mean, you know, just just not, you know, I wake up every day and make sure that, you know, I remind myself to take emotion and ego out of it. And so, mm -hmm. you know, if you're really anchored in, you know, being the best version of yourself you can be and really focused on everyone else, you know what I mean? It a lot, listening is not hard, you know what I mean? And when you listen, you know, it's not to say that the implementation will be, will be, you know, like, like perfect, but, you know, you know, grace and space is always extended uh, to everyone that I that I work with and speak to, uh, and I just hope that you know it's, it's extended back to me, and we mm -hmm. just kind of keep going from there. So, can you talk a little bit about you do national speaking now, and yeah. is that so? Is are you trying to bring more attention to what you're doing in Chicago, or what's kind of the the in, intention behind the, the national? Well, I mean, speaking? not only in t uh, attention to what we're doing, but I mean, there's people getting paid tens of thousands of dollars to speak. And, you know, they, they, they're not a practitioner anymore. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. I think a lot of times we have to really be, um, we have to respect the people who are listening to us. You know what I mean? And so it's really about sharing, you know, what we're doing so that it can inspire someone else or, you know, they can learn about our work and support it. Or, you know what I mean? Just really, you know, want to make sure that, you know, we're coming from an honest um, perspective. And, you know, I think that, you know, we're doing some pretty cool things that, you know, if I share it and if I can motivate someone to keep going, um, not just from what we've, we've, uh, I've been through with Dion Chicago Dream, but what Dion Dawson has been through, I think that, you know, they might get a kick out of hearing, um, that, you know, I never gave up and I kept going. And as a result, you know, I just try to, you know, stay in this this place of gratitude and always wanting to share out because I, I feel really honored to do what I do. Outstanding. So let's let's talk, just uh, get your thoughts here. So everything you distribute on the food side is they're basically whole foods, fresh whole foods. Yes. But ultra processed foods are consumed by everybody on a daily basis here in the U.S., up to 60, 70 percent of their diets, ultra processed foods. So what what are your thoughts on whole foods, which you're doing a fantastic job with versus ultra processed foods, which unfortunately in the neighborhoods we're talking about is what's readily available to all these neighborhoods? Well, I think uh, first and foremost, um, making sure that, you know, I started by saying, you know, um, I don't shame anybody um, mm -hmm. for what they consume. You know what I mean, because we right. we consume what's readily available. So exactly. so understanding that, you know, um a lot of these communities, like the communities I was born and raised, you're not wrong for just, you know, trying to live and stretch a dollar. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's extremely expensive uh to live right now. It's extremely expensive to grocery shop. Um mm -hmm. and it's really on us. You know what I mean? I'm not I don't I don't approach this work from a hey, we got it right and everyone else has it wrong. No, it's we all have to do better. And we all right, have to learn from right. each other. So understanding that, you know, something in moderation is not always bad. 
You know what I mean? But I think we have to continue to find ways to make these uh, healthy options as readily available as possible. And we will not stop until that's the case. And so just understanding that, you know, we have so much more work to do. And that's the mm -hmm. thing that, you know, allows me to keep going is, you know, until everyone has that, has the ability um, to to go somewhere close and get something fresh, we, we're not doing what we need to do for them. Man. So last month I had made a trip to DC, which I've never done before for this topic. And they had a session on Capitol Hill. Uh, it was hosted by an organization called Food Tank. You're probably familiar with them. Yep. And they had a lot of positive conversation about food as medicine. Um, one of the speakers actually was a grocery retailer that's begun to put like dietitians into the grocery store. So as people are shopping, in their local grocery store, they're kind of getting some advice on healthy food choices. So I guess my question for you is, what are your thoughts on food as medicine? I mean, we just talked about whole foods versus ultra processed, but it's kind of what you're doing is fantastic. You're doing it for a very good reason. You're, you're servicing a community, but food as medicine is becoming, in my opinion, more and more important. And my next question is going to be about kids, but at least just Right now, just your your thoughts on food as medicine. Well, I mean, uh, we actually do a lot of food as medicine work. Um, we're actually serving about a little over fifteen hundred patients uh, per week through throughout Cook County. We partner with Food Smart, um, which is the mm -hmm. largest uh, tele uh, telehealth uh, nutrition uh, company in the U.S. Um, and mm -hmm. our work with them is scaling. Um, and I think it's all about you know like like just trying everything. What I love about, you know, what's on the horizon is there are some people who can, you know, uh, who will love that, you know, dietitian in the store to help them. You know what I mean? There's some who will hate it and that's fine. You know what I mean? There's some who can take um, the phone call. There's some who will want to only do it online. There, there's some who would love an app. There's some who would love um, a colleague. You know what I mean? I think mm -hmm. right now, you know, we're in this, you know, this great uh, time of transition, you know what I mean, where, you know, the innovations are really uh, starting to catch up to public health and mm -hmm. and really, you know, we're really trying to figure out, OK, how can technology and innovation, you know, allow us to live healthier lives and to live longer and to, to you know, have, you know, me uh, medicine, you know, and and, you know, doctor data more readily available. So, you know, I appreciate I think uh, food is medicine is not going anywhere. Nope, and I think nope. that is necessary because, you know, food is health. That's what um, Ambassador uh, Earther and Cousin uh, loves to say. You know, I love quoting her on that. It's like, you know, f before food is medicine, you know, it's just food is health. You know what I mean? And and, and what we put in us will will ultimately determine um, to, a, to a large degree the, the type of life we can lead. And so, you know, you know, I'm honored to be, you know, someone who's a part of that decision. Uh, because that's one of the things that we can't live without, you know what I mean? So I think that it, it won't be going anywhere, but I think if we embrace it and really, you know, take responsibility for the role that, you know, we've played in getting to this point, I think we can, you know, continue to turn the tide. Mm -hmm. Well, you mentioned earlier, so one of the stats I have is the average life expectancy in kind of the neighborhoods where you're trying to serve and I'm hoping to serve here in the near future 25 years less in those neighborhoods versus kind of, you know, suburbia America. So um, what you're doing is fantastic to kind of help increase, you know, make, make people's lives better, help increase life expectancy. And you're also helping them avoid getting chronic diseases, which, you know, eating healthy food kind of, you know, stems the tide from chronic diseases. So I just wanted to say thank you for that. I appreciate it. Um, how, how can you, so one of my, you know, what we want to do in this new center in East Cleveland is a, we want to have a big focus on children. So um, health and nutrition for children. I mean, my wife is a teacher when her kids are not healthy, when they don't, aren't eating the right foods, she has issues in the classroom. They're not learning. They're not good students. Whereas when they have good, healthy, nutritious food, they, they are good. They're better students. So how, what, what are your thoughts on kind of helping children as it relates to this topic of uh food food insecurity food is medicine etc well i think you know i'll just you know kind of you know stay you know zoomed out a little bit and i think that you know i would hope that 
you know, two things that we try, we kind of forget is, you know, children are way more perceptive and smarter than we give them credit for. <laughs> um, and, you know, it's all it's always about building, building that trust, not only with them, but, you know, with their primary caregiver. Um, and as a result, if we really focus on earning, you know, the trust, we can really get to the change behaviors and the healthier lifestyles, even with children. And so just, you know, always reminding ourselves that, um, you know, if we, we lead with love and respect, you know, it'll really help the outcomes. And when we're talking about children live, living healthier lives, you know what I mean? Understanding that, you know, no one owes us, you know, respect. No one owes us attention. You know, if we want that, we have to, we have to earn it. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. I think that if we look at, you know, children and focus on earning their respect and their attention and their appreciation, it'll leave us, especially for us in, uh, who are trying to really get to change behaviors. You know what I mean? I think we have to make sure that we take it one step at a time. But I think that, you know, all of this would, if we don't, you know, ultimately continue to go, you know, uh, upstream to, you know, children and really impacting them, then I we lost. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't couldn't agree more. So you become a very busy person. I mean, I've been following you since we met in Chicago just a month ago. You, you've got a lot going on. And um, you made the comment up early, you know, we have to be better than where we, you know, came from. So yeah. what what are your thoughts? What's next for you? What 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 is your future vision beyond, you know, what what's going to happen starting, uh, uh, you know, Saturday here in August, 2023. Uh, I, I have nothing. I, I don't lead my life with, you know, any big dreams or, or audacious goals. My mom a few years ago um, was victorious against kidney cancer. And nice. anybody who's ever um, been affected or afflicted by cancer, uh, you kind of know that life kind of shifts. And you, instead of focusing on the macro, you really get anchored in the micro. And, mm -hmm. you know, for me, every day i just wake up you know with appreciation and love and i just you know whatever you know day i'm i'm awake i give it my all every single day you know i don't leave anything in a reserve tank you know if anything is possible to pull off if i can have an inter um, an interaction you know i i respect and, and appreciate every interact um, interaction i have um and I try to just, you know, do what I can, but no, not like none of this was planned. It's just, you know, day in and day out, you know, bringing that consistency, that hard work, uh, that love, that joy, and just making sure that, you know, when I lay my head down every night that I'm satisfied with who I was and, you know, I'm in a space where I, where I am. Very nice. Very nice. So if you had the attention of the world for two minutes, what would, what would you say? For two minutes, uh, I would immediately um tell everybody i love them because we all don't hear it enough i would um encourage them to you know learn about what we're doing at our website uh .com. um and then i would just you know try to like leave it with you know some type of lighthearted joke or something you know you all, i just would rather people feel good you know what i mean and i think if you ask me this another day I, I might say something different but today it's just you know say hey you're enough you know i love you um we're doing pretty cool stuff here um with with the movement if you join us cool if not just try to find your village um and and just you know work on that but that's pretty much it okay cool so I hope you're spending time with your family. I hope you're not working all the time, taking no, care of your family as well as. Uh... Absolutely, I'll make sure I'm making time. <laughs> good, good. So what we always close the show with a recipe. So what recipe did you bring that a family of four can make under twenty five dollars, under thirty minutes? Oh, I mean, listen. Um, I've been really fascinated, um, with these uh, cucumber jars. Um, that's been going crazy on a. Uh, <laughs> on uh, TikTok, and you just take a whole cucumber, you slice it up, and you know from there you can really, it, I mean it's a blank slate. So for me, what one that I love is uh -huh. actually um, taking a little bit of uh, chopped uh, smoked salmon, uh, chopping it up, not a lot, you know what I mean, maybe like four to eight ounces, uh, chopping it up, you know, throwing it in a, um, in a container, uh, putting a little bit of cream cheese, maybe two or three uh, spoons full, uh, add a little bit of dill. Um, and, you know, chop it up and then, um, add maybe a tweak of, um, you know, like, like some type of binder. So like 
teriyaki sauce, soy sauce, something like that. Um, um, I did capers um, and a little bit of the juice in there. Um, and then you shake it up and like, because you did a whole cucumber or two old cucumbers, um, it's really like something, uh, that you can, uh, eat kind of in between meals. So like, like, I think a lot of times, um, especially when you talk about processed foods, um, we don't really have a lot of snacks readily available, so right? It's healthy. So what I try to do is like be realistic with, okay, you know, I'm not looking for a full meal all the time if I'm on the go or, if a mother or a father or a parent or caregiver is not is not able to make a meal, what's something that could be just kind of in a jar, you know, ready, you know, to eat? And that's something that I love. You know, what I mean, I'm, um, you know, so then you can, you know, easily add it with, you know, a cup of prepared brown rice or, you know, what I mean, something like that, and and it really kind of stretch. Because I think the bigger thing is, you know, what's something that you know doesn't lack flavor that's good for you but it's mm -hmm. something that could be fairly simple so i love being able to have something that's kind of already pre-prepared and then yeah. how i pair something with it allows it to kind of have um have like you know a, the look and feel of something new for that day nice nice well you're about half my age dion so uh <laughs> tiktok is is still new to me oh, so I'm gonna, okay. to, okay. I'm gonna have to take a look at it <laughs> <laughs> yeah take a look at it listen just go on the search bar just put in uh you know cucumber recipe or something and you'd be surprised you know I mean i think you okay. know just just you know like like they the search bar is there you know right at the top you know feel free just search wherever you want to i think you know it, because I, what i love about it um you know social media um you know like anything you know has its um its upside and its downside yeah yeah but you know, we have a world where you can, you know, connect with people. And I think that it's important to continue to just try to find good people. And if you can do that and you can see someone that is struggling to eat healthy, but they're trying to, there's just something about that that's extremely motivating. Well, I'm going to post my first TikTok short and my first uh, Instagram short next Tuesday. That's what so. I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking <laughs> about, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm hey, working hey, on that's it. what I'm talking about. Good job, man. So I've started the last couple of weeks. So I'm trying to, and I actually was on a, a, a TV show here a couple of days ago too, talking about this, but I'm trying to get more people. So same thing you're doing, but people that are able to kind of get out to like a farmer's market or something. I basically went to a local farmer's market last Saturday. I basically bought a bunch of just fresh vegetables. I mean, carrots. I mean, right now there's a lot of stuff in the Midwest in season and yeah. it's in grocery stores, it's in farmer's markets. It's, it's available to most, but not all the neighborhoods we're talking about. So what I've been doing is that I've been posting on the podcast notes, basically a website. You can go in and pull down the state that you're in, the month that you're in, and it will basically list out all of the fresh vegetables that are currently in season. So they're being picked right now. And like in the Midwest, there are over 60 fruits and vegetables available that you can go and, and get that, you know, isn't shipped from Mexico or, you know, someplace overseas. It's, it's right in your backyard. So I'm just encouraging people to kind of take a look at that. Just an example, apples, arugula. I'm not sure what's in your boxes right now, but at least in season, apples, arugula, basil, beets, Brussels sprouts, cantaloupe, carrots, cucumbers, corn is fantastic right now, green beans, garlic, kale, mushrooms, onions, peppers, peaches, squash. I mean, that's like a, and tomatoes. I mean, that's like, I just knit, listed 12 there's you know 48 plus more and i think like fresh, 10 fresh or food. 11 of those are actually in our box so it's pretty all cool. right yeah. <laughs> yeah. fantastic all right so dion i want to thank you for being on the show of course you're a great person you're a great inspiration you're doing great things in chicago sure. keep it up and uh hopefully we'll be able to duplicate some of what you're doing in chicago here in cleveland very soon absolutely appreciate it thank you for everything you're doing and thanks for having me all right thanks dion